All right, so today I am gonna break out the ultrasound, and believe it or not, I actually do have an ultrasound that I use on my ball pythons, and what I use it for is to check for follicles inside of the snakes to see if they're developing eggs in the females. And what, pretty much I'm right in the middle of the ball python breeding season, and kind of where I'm at right now is I've had about 20 hatchlings that hatched out already. I have another 65 eggs in the incubator pretty much all of my females that I think are gonna lay have already laid except for one that I think is gonna lay as a matter of fact I have four females that I paired up this year that didn't actually lay eggs and three of them look really skinny like I know for sure they're not gonna lay eggs but it'd be interesting to see on the ultrasound even though they're really skinny if they have any follicles and the interesting thing is, is I did an ultrasound on some of those females earlier in the year and it looked like they were developing follicles so it's kind of interesting that some of them just don't go it, it seems like almost like they reabsorb the the immature follicles and they don't develop into eggs and I haven't quite figured out why that happens but I think it's pretty interesting and one of them is really fat and coiled up looks like she could lay almost any day now and it'd be interesting to see what that looks like on the ultrasound as well so what I'm gonna do this crazy snake this is this is Bobby my bamboo ball python and he is like getting ready to go into a shed he's kind of fading out a little bit kind of turning pink and he is a male so we definitely don't need to ultrasound the males it's only the females that we ultrasound. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my ultrasound. Actually, I think I paid about $1,000 out the door on eBay. I can put a link in the description below. And it's really portable, compact, it works really well. And I've used it pretty much every year. And it's, it kind of gives you an idea of how many females are gonna lay, kind of how many eggs they're gonna produce. And sometimes you can go through the snake and see the immature eggs in the snake and it can also tell you kind of you know the development of uh, especially if you're breeding ball pythons they say normally when you're breeding early in the year you should you should pair them up at 10 millimeters 20 millimeters 30 millimeters 40 millimeters so basically four times and then pretty much when they get to like 45 millimeters it's about the size of a chicken egg and that is is essentially when you can stop ultrasounding and usually that they they'll lay eggs at that point but I've actually seen you know they get to about 20 25 millimeters and it's kind of almost 50 50 you don't know if they're gonna lay eggs if those eggs are gonna develop or if they're gonna reabsorb them into the snake which is kind of interesting so let me show you my ultrasound machine all right so here's my ultrasound it actually is very compact it fits in it looks almost like a laptop case it's actually smaller than a laptop which is pretty amazing so it's just this little thing right here and uh, I can go ahead and plug it in and power it up and take a look at that it is really small really cute you can get these on eBay you know pretty much uh, they actually there's a bunch of different prices for these I would say uh, it depends on the probe you get so if you're you're looking on eBay looking for an ultrasound like this you, what you really need for snakes is you need the linear probe most of the times they come with like a convex probe that's kind of like a little circle but this is like the straight probe that you need for ball pythons all right so here's kind of another glitch on this I actually bought it and it comes with what a, kind of a, I think that's like a European plug and I actually had to buy a separate adapter to adapt it for the plugs in the US all right, so the probe has this kind of a connection on the back. Uh, it's kind of like an old school kind of a connection here. I'm not sure. I forgot the name of it. I used to know this way back in the 80s when I was working on computers. I can't remember the name of this connector, but it connects right on the back over here just like that and let's see if I can figure out <laughs> the switches so the switch the on switch is right on the side right here and that is how you turn it on and the fan noise I would say you can hear the fan kind of in the background so it's kind of a noisy little unit not too bad you can still talk above it but there is some noise associated with this ultrasound
All right, so another thing you're going to need if you get this ultrasound, you're going to need some transmission gel. And this is essentially what I use. I burn through this really quick. I'd say a tube will do like maybe four or five snakes, <laughs> maybe six. And I put it on really heavy. And really, so if you take a look at the screen, you really can't see anything when you rub it on me. It doesn't really do anything until you put the transmission gel on. And you really need the gel to go from the probe to the animal so you can actually see it on the ultrasound. All right, so here's the first snake that I want to ultrasound. This is a big lemon blast female. So this is a pastel pinstripe. And the funny thing about this snake is I think it has, it comes from a locality, I'm pretty sure in West Africa, that just produces larger ball pythons in that region. So she is a really big snake anyway. Even though she looks really big, you really can't, tell she kind of looks like she has a little lump right here she's kind of curling up like I'm thinking she's gonna lay but I want to just check on this ultrasound to see if she has any eggs in her belly so the first thing you do is put a bead of this uh, transmission gel right on the probe and I think this bottle might actually be almost empty and I put a pretty decent uh, uh, amount on the probe I like to get it pretty thick and then what you do essentially is you go, um, it's about a third of the way up from the tail is usually where you start. So uh, I think like the gallbladder is like in the middle over here. And then you have to go just past the gallbladder. And then what I like to do is kind of like ride the spine like right in here. Let's see if we can actually see anything in here. Let me see. <laughs> let's see, let's see. So that right there looks like a big egg right there. So you can see uh you can see right right there. <laughs> Let me see. So right there, that is like the line between the two eggs right there, and the egg is over here. They are really, really big eggs. And let's see, the, it's all about the angle, I'm trying to get the angle right. So that actually, <laughs> you can freeze it right there. So this is actually an egg here, and this is an egg over here. This girl is definitely going to lay, those are some really big eggs. All right, so here's a little bit better of a close-up on the screen if you want to see it a little bit better. Let's see if we can see right here. Uh, let's see if I can get it for you again. And it takes, let me tell you, if, if you're working with these ultrasounds, it takes quite a while to figure out you know what you're looking at and how to hold the probe and the angle you kind of have to ride right along the spine so right here is the division between the eggs this is an egg right here this is an another egg over here and some reason if you don't hold it right you get these vertical lines up and down there you can see it really good right there so this is actually a water soluble gel a transmission gel and what I do is I just kind of wipe it off with a paper towel and you know you can actually go through the whole snake and see how many eggs she has but you pretty much have to lather her up in that transmission gel to find out and I'm not really that curious it doesn't really matter to me so what I do is I wipe it off with a dry paper towel and then I use a little bit of water and just kind of wet a paper towel and then go back over just to make sure all that transmission gel is off of the snake all right, so this is my pied female that I paired up this year. I actually saw her a lot, quite a few times, but you, as you can see, she doesn't really look like she has the body condition. She's pretty thick up in here, but she's pretty thin down by her tail. I'm thinking she probably won't lay. As a matter of fact, at the beginning of the breeding season, I gave her an ultrasound, and you can actually measure them. They're 7.2 millimeters which means it was actually like at the very beginning where you start breeding them. Basically, once they hit 10 millimeters, you start pairing them up. And, and honestly, I don't really look at the follicle size through the breeding season. I just kind of pull out my ultrasound, like in cases like this, to kind of check to and just see where I'm at, if the season's over, maybe halfway through the season, or at the beginning to kind of see where everyone's at. 
but I'm not like really obsessive with you know trying to ultrasound all my females. I know some people are like, you know, every month they're looking at their snakes on the ultrasound. So from here, you kind of go up about a third of the way it should be, right along the spine here. And let's take a look if this girl has anything we can see. And it's weird, she kind of has like this little, kind of a, it almost looks like a thick swollen point right in here. And see, I'm pretty sure this black spot right here, that is the gallbladder, which is interesting. I don't think this girl has anything. <laughs> so you can actually see like right, um, See right, right in here, it looks like this little spot right here could be a small follicle, but it's not developing. So we definitely, definitely missed out on her this season. You can tell by her body size. You see, and sometimes it just looks like little tiny BBs in there. And that's kind of how they normally are year round until you actually pair them up and you actually see those little BB sized follicles start developing into eggs. But this girl is definitely not gonna lay. All right, so this this uh, this is probably one of my biggest disappointments. This girl, I was really hoping this girl would lay some eggs. She's actually three years old, and she weighed a lot more at the beginning of the breeding season. And, and this is actually a pastel spider desert ghost. And you can see she they normally with the desert ghost they have a really intense feeding response. So you can tell she is in feeding mode. But the funny thing is, is in the breeding season when they're even if you know even if you pair them up and they don't lay eggs they'll go on a long fast you know, she's been looking like that for the last month or two and I keep offering her meals and she refuses every single time which is kind of interesting and it looks like she'd take a bite at me if I got too close so I gotta kind of keep my distance on this girl let's see that bottle is empty let me put some more gel on here and I'm just going to give her a quick ultrasound. So what I do on my females, I have magnetic name tags on the ARS rack that stick to the rack. And I flip them upside down, which tells me that I need to check on those twice a day to see if there's eggs. And going through these, if I know they're not going to lay eggs for sure, I can flip those name tags over. Then I don't have to check on these girls every single day, twice a day. So it looks like so far we just have one more snake. This, <laughs> there's no way that, you know, just looking at the size, there's no way this girl's. She was really big and chunky and she looked like she was developing eggs. But, you know, I'm, I'm almost positive this girl's not going to lay. And let's see what it looks like here. Sometimes the angle is really tough. I wonder if we'll actually see anything. Boy, it almost looks like. Hmm. Sometimes it's really hard to tell <laughs> this girl. It is really hard. And then when they start moving, it's like, uh oh, it's, you know, it, I almost like to, to get them in the tub to where, um, um, kind of where they're all coiled up before they really start taking off because once they start taking off then it's then it's a challenge chasing the snake and trying to ultrasound and I'm not really seeing anything here definitely I'm not even really seeing any follicles or anything so I'm not sure exactly if uh, you know if she could have reabsorbed her eggs and exactly what that looks like on the ultrasound, but I would say I'm 100% sure that this girl is not going to lay. And uh, uh, sometimes the angle is really tough. And see now she's moving. It's it's really tough. You know, I've seen, actually I've seen a lot of people, what they do is they'll take the head of the snake and put it in a snake bag to kind of hold the snake still while you're doing the ultrasound. But I'm not seeing anything in there that really looks like even, even I don't even see little tiny mini follicles in there. So that girl is definitely not gonna lay. 
All right, so I have another girl here. This is a pastel, and she actually looked like she had some really decent body condition at the beginning of the season, but she didn't develop at all. It seems like as soon as I paired her up, she stopped eating and didn't develop the eggs and got skinnier and skinnier and just fasted. She's been fasting for, what, six, seven months now, hasn't eaten anything, and that is the problem. Uh, I, we could give her a quick ultrasound to see what's going on, but the, the problem is, is if you pair up your snakes and they don't have the body condition or if they're not feeding then essentially what you're doing is you're just putting your snakes on a fast so what I'll do is I'll go through all my snakes at the beginning of the breeding season and anything that looks like this I definitely won't breed it the next year I'll wait you know I'll give it a year off try to really get it to eat as a matter of fact I have one snake that I was given the year off this year and it still hasn't eaten from last year. It's almost been 12 months and I still can't get it to eat, which is pretty crazy. These ball pythons, you never know, you know if they're gonna eat or not. And let's take a look. If we can see anything in this one. And let me tell you, it is. it can be a challenge with this ultrasound. Uh, <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, what you're seeing and interpreting actually what you're seeing over here. And, and a lot of times, like, for instance, this snake, I don't even see any, uh, I'm not seeing any even immature follicles yet. So you can definitely see the spine. Uh, I thought it'd be interesting to feed your snake and then see if you can see the rat in there. I think that'd be kind of cool. But uh, I'm not really seeing anything at all, not even immature follicles, which normally you actually see like little tiny BB sized follicles. All right, so I want to give you just a quick overview of this ultrasound, just kind of give you some of the physical attributes here, some of the physical characteristics. So if you see kind of how big it is, it is not really that big. It's kind of like, I would say, kind of like a small laptop, and I think Bobby really likes it. <laughs> <laughs> this crazy steak. He's like, I'm gonna run that ultrasound. <laughs> that is pretty funny. I've never seen him actually up on <laughs> anything like this. He's acting kind of funny. So, uh, so as far as kind of the buttons and the functionality, it has this little this little button right in the middle. And what that does is it moves the cursor around here, and then it kind of has. A <laughs> <laughs> Look at this thing. And then it has a menu where you can actually measure the length and the width. So essentially what you do is, uh, it kind of has this menu on the bottom here, along the bottom. And the only one I really hit is, uh, it's called, you have to hit general, and then you have to hit distance. And then from there, you can actually measure the length from the left to the right. And then, you know, from the top to the bottom, you can measure the distance and it'll give you an average of whatever you're measuring. In my case, it's follicles, and usually they're not perfectly round, they're kind of oblong, so you kind of get an average size. And it's pretty cool if you kind of look at, I don't know if you can see it very good on the camera, you can see all the different kind of the buttons. I don't know if you can read those, but it has some interesting buttons on the bottom. And I don't really use any of those buttons except for the freeze button and then up on the top here's the kind of the keyboard across the top it has numbers and letters and a bunch of stuff you can do and then on the, on the uh, it has all these menus and functions and kind of going from left to right and top to bottom you can actually it's actually a really powerful tool and i use just a fraction of what this thing can actually do i don't really use all the functionality of this thing and I don't know if you can hear kind of how loud it is it's it's a little bit loud you could definitely notice that it's on but you know it's not really overbearing to where you can't talk above the fan it's got a little fan in there that really kind of cranks out some noise but it's not too bad at all so that is my ultrasound you know I I bought it early on it's one of the first things I bought actually and I wasn't sure how much I use it and I let me tell you I use this thing quite a bit it's a really awesome piece of equipment. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.